Good morning everyone. Today is day 38 of the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge and I am frying up those potatoes that were left over from Sunday and we have some eggs and Dusty is here today. Um, he was out late last night with the basketball team and he woke up this morning and he's like, can I stay home? So he, he really needed some rest. So he's in there now, which is fine because I have this foot doctor today and that'll just be um, one thing that, you know, I won't have to be by myself because <laughs> I imagine he'll sleep until it's time. Oh, it's a tough one. So... I hope everyone's doing well. All right, I will see you guys in a bit. To the doctor we go. Dusty's gonna drive. Well, I'm in here now. Dusty's waiting in the car. Hello everyone, I just got back from the doctor's appointment. And I did stop at um, the Jack's Fresh Market and I spent $45. Uh, and I got, I wanted to show you what I got. Let's turn the camera around. All right, so I got two bags of lettuce. Let's see. Oh, uh, I got me a treat. I know this was, this was like $5.89. It was outrageous but I I really really wanted it and then of course this is my salad dressing and it's good but I've got to hide it because they will eat it all up and then I don't have any when I ha want a salad um, and then of course anytime I see Myers lemons I'm buying them they're my favorite and in fact I'm gonna tell Bruce so when he does get paid I want to go back before they're all gone because they go quick and then I got this for, cause I forgot it the other day when I was at, um, so now that's 80 and 45. So 125. So that's what I've spent now for February, but I only spent 160 for January. So, and it's mostly, it's either dairy or fruits. And of course, you know, a couple treats here and there because because we like them so i can't wait to tell bruce about these um you know he doesn't have a phone so it's not, i can't call him or text him or anything like that and uh colby doesn't either until he gets paid and so he's crystal's sending him one so then um he'll have a new uh, phone once crystal sends it to him but i'm gonna take bruce and get him a phone too as soon as we can Getting water for all the animals. <laughs> Julie's out for the walk too. Come down to check on all the plants, make sure no one dried out. I got the lights off so it won't hurt your eyes or be so crazy bright. But it's almost time to do it. And once the next leaves come in, but, and then this one here, I think is the coolest. Look at that, that's the artichoke, globe artichoke. Yes. So I washed a bunch of sheets and blankets and that's why they're up here on the rack. All right, so I made oh. Brunswick stew. <laughs> the leftover um, llama beans, of course I call them butter beans, but um, I haven't been able to grow them here. I've tried now twice and they it just must not get hot enough, but I'm gonna try again this year um, They did fine in North Carolina uh, I'm gonna pick the chicken that was left over as Bruce called it the gluten-free All I did was write the GF on it just because I wanted to remember which Seasoning I had put on it and then I found this when I went out to the freezer um, some brisket um, bacon and then I'm gonna throw a pumpkin pie in because I got like six pumpkin pies 
um, that I had bought for Thanksgiving from the Schwann man. Um, and plus you you bought like three or something, you got one free. But I haven't had him come back, and we have been using them since 1995. So to buy ice cream mostly, because when you get out here and it's hot, and not here, but so per se in North Carolina, you needed to have somebody to deliver ice cream because you couldn't get it home. So tomatoes 2021, 2019 for the potatoes, 23 on the broth, and then these are December 2020. Or, um, and these are from Linda. Thanks, you. thank you, Linda. Bruce told me that Brunswick stew came from Brunswick, North Carolina, but it's actually Brunswick, Georgia. Um, it's like was eight in the 1800s, like 1836 or 63. I have to look at it again, but I didn't, I didn't really look at the date. But um, you with Brunswick stew, you want to get this chicken um shredded like. Um, and it'd be better if this was like freshly cooked um, and you could just really shred it soft. So if you wanted to, you could go ahead and cook it like in the crock, crock pot all day. And this is kind of a stew that you can put together really fast. And you're, um, then you just put the chicken broth in and with the chicken broth, you uh, put your llama beans and potatoes and so a lot of corn, it always has a lot of corn and uh, cans of um, homegrown tomatoes or even whatever you can, you know, you have. Um, but it's a, it's my oldest daughter's favorite stew. stew. Uh, she, she liked that one and the, uh, the one, the chicken, uh, the tamale, what do you call it? Um, not tamale. Chicken enchilada soup. I had to get it out. I think I did that one um, sometime around the beginning of January. That's those two are her. These two are her favorites. And there's a can, a yellow can, a Brunswick stew that if you can find it at the grocery store. I, I know I've seen it in the South. Not so much here. I haven't seen it here at all, actually. And um, but every time that I would. Uh, come from North Carolina up to Wisconsin where my daughter lives, the oldest daughter, Lexis, uh, we would bring her a case of it. And she she loves it. And we first um, found out about the, the Brunswick stew when they were little. Um, and we used to do 4-H and stuff. And we went to uh, the state fair, the North Carolina state fair right there in Raleigh. and we, uh, um, you know, so they were handing out little samples. Well, everybody got a sample and that was it. Then we became Brunswick stew fans. So we do love some Brunswick stew. And, and the corn in it just makes it so good. And these dogs are going crazy because they see I'm picking chicken and they're like, mama, just one bite, please. Just one bite. So you want to do that, and um, I'm going to go ahead and get that done, and then I'll bring you back. All the chicken is picked, and now I'm going to open everything up and go ahead and get it in there. And I might have to go get another broth um, downstairs. So I'll get that um, wiped out because that's that good bacon grease. I don't want to miss that, do we? So... Gosh, it smells so good. They're gonna love this. It's, it's always a goodie. Now, I didn't use the second jar of tomatoes, but if I had like a pint of tomatoes, that would be good. But Bruce never wants to do pints. He always wants to do quarts for everything. <laughs> so, um, it, it, he want, cause he always wants to be done faster. Have y'all figured that out by now? But I'm gonna put some onions in and garlic and then um, like a, a tablespoon of brown sugar and then some salt, pepper, um, and a little dash of bacon grease. Um, and you, that's pretty much it. And you could throw in a little bit of parsley, but really you don't have to. In, in traditional, it wouldn't be parsley in it. 
It's just, I always like putting parsley in it because it makes a little bit of green in it as well. Then up some of that garlic. You can see how big the cloves are. Um, I don't do the cheap garlic, but that is definitely, Bruce, he doesn't, he's not into this cutting it and stuff. And um, I just take and peel it sometimes. And then also I, I love that little thing that I've got that rolls. Let me show you. That makes it so nice, especially when you got big pieces. But if you don't have big pieces, it's it's not as good. Look, it's peeled. Gotta love it, right? And in goes the soup. Oop. So I'm gonna probably put like about three or four more, I mean, two more of the um, cloves in. Yeah, here they are. And I put all the onions, but one. So, and it looks really good. Let me show you. Look at that. That looks so good. I think I'm gonna go get another jar of potatoes though. Cause I think it could use some more potatoes. Well, you know, there is two cans down there. Maybe I might get those, but these are our home canned ones. And I want to get them used up because I need to do more. And I've got all the potatoes um, pulled in here now. So these three crates are full of potatoes. So I'm going to be doing these. This was the ones we thought about using. Let's see. Oh, yeah. See? how nice and big they are. We're gonna do twice baked potatoes with those like we did last year, cause everybody loved those and those went quick. And then we're gonna do um, the mashed potatoes, which they'll go into the freezer containers. Those did amazing. Um, in fact, I had like, I did nine last year and I'm gonna tell you, uh, that was really good. That was definitely worth every ounce of cutting and uh, cooking and everything. Um, and I did buy two gallons of milk on Friday or whatever day it was, Saturday, when we went to the store. That was in that $40. Um, so, so that's what I'm going to do with the potatoes. And then I don't think we're going to need any more of the french fries because we still had some of those left over from last year's potatoes. But we'll see. We'll count them. And I counted all the cranberries last night. And the cranberries, I do need to do that cranberry sauce. So that's going to get done too. All you have to do is cook until the lima beans are soft, which they are. And look at that. Put a little bit of salt and pepper on the, in the bowl with it if you need to. And Bruce likes to put cheese on his. And I'm going to put the lid on now and it'll be all ready is out and I'm making some cornbread here just a regular cornbread but I added um, some cheese in it all right look at that I'm gonna put a little bit of that habanero cheese on top out of him adding cheese to the cornbread takes it to a whole nother level all right so let's get it go mm. it's so good even the chicken got soft and tender and shredded up you taste the um the potatoes everything it's really good we don't raise no tough chicken around here. Yep. That's not what I'm saying because earlier when I was picking it. Um, so this whole thing, except for the llama beans and the corn, would have been from everything here. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay, so I just um, can make one of these little spirals, which is really so simple. You just want to kind of use your thumb 
go around. The, Dusty and uh, Colby are here. I'm pushing too hard because I'm trying to show something. But that's all you got to do. And this is 14 gauge wire. And I just did this one here and I flattened it. Um, this and then I used one of my little hammers to get the indentations. And what you could do now is you could like wire wrap this with this uh, lower gauge, well, it's a higher gauge wire, but yet the wire is thinner. So 24 gauge, 20, 26 gauge. Um, and then here's why I would make some earrings and this would go into the tumbler. Mm -hmm. So now that you've got them flat and you just want to come in with whatever um, hammer you have or you want to use. And don't hit your finger. Oh, don't even jinx me, Ricky Bobby. You want me to do the hammering part for you? Okay. All right, so now they're going to go in the tumbler. All right, so I got the tumbler going right here. And then I'm washing all the jars from yesterday. And then I will get them on the, um, once they're rinsed off, um, just to make sure there's nothing left on the jar. And that way when it goes on the shelf, it's not sticky or anything just in case, especially when you're doing like pressure can and stuff, because a lot of times they can be oily or greasy sometimes. So um, I rinse them well, and then I get them dried and labeled. Mm -hmm. All labeled and ready for the shelf. All right, so now they're all on the shelf. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you thanks for watching, and I wanted to show you the earrings after they came out of the tumbler. Can you see them? No? Yeah, they look beautiful. I was trying to get a closer. Okay.